let the sequence Vn be given by the sequence y sub n minus 1. Let's look at the z transforms of the sequences Vn and Yn. Here we have the z transform of the sequence y sub n. We know that that can be written as capital Y of z. On the next line we have the z transform of the sequence V sub n. Now let's look at the sequence y sub n minus 1. How do we generate such a sequence? Well, the value of n that we start with is 0, so we just plug 0 in for n. So we get y sub 0 minus 1, or y sub minus 1. Next we plug 1 in for n, so we get y sub 1 minus 1, which is y sub 0. So you see that we can get the sequence y sub n minus 1 by taking the sequence y sub n, which begins with y0, and shifting it one unit, one place to the right. So that br brings in the term that's to the left of y sub 0. That's assuming that, it's, that it exists. Um, and that term is y sub minus 1. Now let's look at v sub n. Well, the first term of that sequence is v sub 0. The next term is v sub 1, and so on. And we want these to be equal. We are calling y sub n minus 1 the sequence v sub n. So over here, in the z transform for v sub n, we can replace the v's with the y's for this sequence up here, y sub n minus 1. Notice what happens if we factorize z to the minus 1 out of this series here. We get this thing here. But this is just y of z, the z transform of the sequence y sub n. So we can write the z transform of y sub n minus 1, the shifted sequence, well, right shifted sequence, as y sub minus 1 plus z to the power of minus 1 times big Y of z. So we have the z transform of a sequence that has been shifted to the right by one place. Now let's consider the sequence y sub n minus 2. We will call this sequence wn. So here I'm writing out some of the terms of wn. So let's look at some of the terms of y sub n minus 2. So we plug 0 in for n, and we get y minus 2 for the first term. When we plug 1 in for n, we get y sub minus 1. When we plug 2 in, we get y sub 0. Then we get y sub 1, and so on. So you can see that w naught is y sub minus 2, w1 is y sub minus 1, and w2 is y sub 0. So let's write down the z transform of wn. Well, um, we know what that is. It's w naught by z to the naught. Well, that's just w naught. Next we have w1 times z to the power of minus 1. Then w2 times z to the power of minus 2. w3 times z to the power of minus 3. And so on. So, let's get z of y sub n minus 2. Well, we take the first term, which is y minus 2, multiply that by um, z to the power of naught. Well, that's just going to give us y sub minus 2. The next term is y sub minus 1. We multiply this by uh, z to the power of minus 1. Okay, so remember that we need to sum from n equals 0 to infinity each term of the sequence times z to the power of minus n. So when n is naught, we get y sub minus 2 times z to the naught. When n is 1, we get y sub minus 1 z to the minus 1. When n is 2, we get y sub 0 times z to the minus 2. Okay, so we just take um, each term of the sequence and multiply it by the appropriate power of z. The next term is going to be y sub 1 z to the minus 3. Alright, so you can see that the sequence y sub n minus 2 is got by taking the sequence y sub n, which begins with y0, and shifting it two places to the right. Okay, and that's how we bring in these two new terms, y sub minus 1 and y sub minus 2. Now we are going to get the z transform of y sub n minus 2 in terms of the z transform of y sub n. So what we do here is we go to the 
the terms that begin with y0 z to the minus 2 and, f and factorize out z minus 2. Okay, so when we factorize z to the power of minus 2 out of this term, we get y1 z to the minus 1. And if we do it for the next term, we will get y2 z to the minus 2. The next term is y2 uh, y2 z to the minus 4 here. So you can see the pattern. Inside the square brackets, we have the z transform of y sub n. Okay, z transform of y sub n and we can write that as big Y of Z. Now let's consider the general situation where the series Y sub N is shifted M places to the right. So we just go back up here to see the pattern. Y sub N minus two, the Z transform of Y sub N minus two has a first term Y sub minus two. So the first term of this will be Y sub minus M. You can see how to get the next term. We add 1 onto this subscript. Minus 2 plus 1 gives us minus 1. So we add 1 onto minus m to get y sub minus m plus 1. And uh, the power of z here is minus 1. We're just getting the z transform. If we set n equal to 0, the first term of this sequence will be y sub minus m. And we multiply that by z to the power of 0. To get the next term, we plug 1 in for n. So we get y sub 1 minus m or y sub minus m plus 1 times z to the power of minus 1. n is 1. And so on. We plug in 2 for n and we get y sub 2 minus m or minus m plus 2 z to the power of minus n. n in this case is 2. So how far do we go? Well if we go back up to this here we had two terms here and um, you know we had to factorize z to the minus 2 out so, in the general situ situation, we will have m terms. So we have z to the power of minus m here. Okay, the m refers to the m terms that come before it. Um, and that's going to be multiplied by y of z. Now, if the sequence is causal, then this thing reduces down considerably. You see, all the terms that come before z to the minus m times y of z have negative subscripts. Like if we go back up to the case where we had uh, this sequence here for z of y sub n minus 2, the terms that come before this term have negative subscripts. And for a causal sequence, these values are 0. Okay, so for a causal sequence, n begins with 0. So we just ignore all these terms here. Now you might also see a causal sequence indicated by this term here. Now this thing is a unit step sequence. Now for this unit step sequence the step occurs when n is equal to m. So when n is equal to m the value of this is 1 and it's equal to 1 for values of n that are greater than m. For values of n that are less than m, this function u sub n minus m is 0. Now remember this comes from the unit step function where the step occurs at the origin. So just as a reminder again, if we were just talking about the function u sub n, the step would occur at the origin. So when n is 0, u sub 0 is 1, u sub 1 is 1, u sub 2 is 1, and so on. u sub minus 1 is 0, u sub minus 2 is 0. So we can get u sub n minus m by shifting this sequence by m units to the right. You see, if we work it out at this value here, we plug m in for n in the subscript, we get u m minus m, which is u of 0. But that's the value of this function over here at 0. u of 0 is 1. So the value of the function u sub n minus m at m is equal to the value of the function u sub n at 0. 
So let's try to see this more fully. So I'm going to actually write it out and show that the result is z to the minus m times big Y of z. Well, we start by putting 0 in for n, so we get y sub minus m times u sub minus m. Next thing we put 1 in for m, so we get y sub 1 minus m times u sub 1 minus m, or if you like, minus m plus 1 as I wrote up here, but it doesn't matter. This is multiplied by z to the power of minus n, where n is 1. What's the next term going to be? We plug 2 in for n, so we get y sub 2 minus m times u sub 2 minus m times z to the power of minus 2. We keep going until n is equal to m. So we get y sub m minus m. Well, that's just y sub 0 times u sub m minus m. That's u sub 0. z to the power of minus m. I'll just write in the next term. Um, this is the mth term. So the m plus first term is going to be... Um, y sub m plus 1 minus m, which is y sub 1 times u sub 1, z to the power of minus m plus 1. Now we know that u sub 0 is equal to 1. Okay, that's our unit step function. And u sub 1 is equal to 1, so we can drop the u's from here on. But uh, before this term is reached, um, we have a load of terms whose u values are zero. Okay, the, the subscripts are negative. Okay, so um, only when we get to the zero subscript, then the u, u is equal to one. Prior to that, u is zero, because all these subscripts will be negative. So we can just drop all these terms. So you see now that we can factorize z to the minus m out of all these terms, beginning with this term. So we will have um, y0 here. Okay, the u0 is 1. For the next term, we will have y1, z to the power of minus 1. Okay, so we get minus m minus 1 for this term. And the next term will be y2, z to the power of minus 2, and so on. So you can see clearly now that the result for a causal sequence is um, z to the power of minus m times big Y of z. Okay, as an example, let's take the shifted sequence a to the power of n minus 1. So this is the geometric sequence that has been shifted by one place to the right. Let's look at some terms of this sequence. Okay, if we call this sequence y sub n minus 1. Well, the first term is got by putting 0 in for n, so we will get y sub minus 1. And that's going to be a to the power of minus 1. Um, next we put 1 in for n, so we will get a to the power of 0. So this term is going to be y sub 0. Um, the next term is got by putting 2 in for n, so we get a to the power of 2 minus 1, or a to the power of 1. So this is our y sub 1. Next term is going to be a squared, which will be our y sub 2 term, and so on. Now, we want our sequence to be a causal sequence. So we want the terms that have negative subscripts to be 0. So we want this term to be 0. so that it won't contribute anything to the z-transform. Now we could of course show that this sequence is a causal sequence more explicitly by multiplying a to the n minus 1 by the unit step function u sub n minus 1. So let's see a few terms of this sequence. So again we put 0 in for n, so the first term will be y sub minus 1. So we're going to get a to the power of minus 1 times u sub minus 1. The next term will be a to the 0 times u sub 0, then we have a to the 1 times u sub 1, and so on. Now next we use the fact that u sub n is 0 if n is negative, and it's equal to 1 if n is non-negative. So straight away, since u sub minus 1 is 0, we see that y sub minus 1, 
the term with the negative subscript is zero. And all the other terms involve one. U sub zero is one, U sub one is one, so we're just multiplying by one, so we can just drop those. So that's an application of something that we stated earlier. We just multiply our sequence by the unit step function. Just make the subscripts the same if we want to ensure that our sequence is causal. Now let's get the transform of this sequence. So we will just use this formula here. Um, what is m? Well, we can see that m is 1 in our situation. Okay. So it's the sequence y sub n minus 1. So the transform is going to be z to the power of minus 1 times big Y of z, where big Y is the transform of um, y, uh, y sub n, which is the transform of a to the power of n. Okay, so y sub n minus 1 is a to the n minus 1. So the sequence y sub n is the sequence a to the power of n. Now this is something that we did in a previous video. We saw that the transform is given by z over z minus a. So we have to multiply z to the minus 1 by z over z minus a, and that's going to give us 1 over z minus a. Now let's take this example here. It's the geometric sequence again, but it's shifted by two places to the right. So its transform is given by z to the power of minus m, where m is 2 in this case. So it's z to the power of minus 2 times big Y of z, where big Y of z is the z transform of a to the power of n. Well, as before, we know that that's z over z minus a. So z to the minus 2 by z to the 1 is z to the minus 1. And that's uh, z to the minus 1 is 1 over z, so we could multiply above and below by z to get this. Okay, let's look at this example. We want to write the following sequence, f sub n, as a difference of two unit step sequences. So this sequence is equal to 1 for values of n running from 0 to 4 inclusive, and it's equal to 0 for other values of n. Okay, let's look at the unit step sequence u sub n. We know that that's equal to 1 for non-negative n, and it's equal to 0 for negative n. So I'll show that in this color here. Of course, the vertical lines are not part of the graph, but this is what u sub n would look like, and of course it includes these values. And these ones are zero. Okay, so in this purple color we have u sub n. Now let's consider the sequence u sub n minus 5. So I've explained in previous videos that that's got by shifting the sequence u sub n by 5 units to the right. So the step occurs at n equals 5. So I'll indicate that in blue. So um, this sequence is 1 for n greater than or equal to 5, and it's 0 otherwise. So in blue we have the sequence u sub n minus 5. So as a reminder of why u sub n minus 5 is u sub n shifted 5 units to the right, we only need to consider the value of u sub n minus 5 at 5. Well, we just plug 5 in for n, and we get u sub 0, but we know that u sub 0 is the value of the function u sub n at 0. And uh, we know that at 0, u sub n is 1. So the value of the function u sub n minus 5 at 5 is the same as the value of the function u sub n at 0. So both functions have looked the same at 0 and at 5. So the step occurs at 0 for u sub n and at 5 for u sub n minus 5. Now notice what happens when we take u sub n and subtract u sub n minus 5. So we take the purple value and subtract the blue value if you like, but they'll cancel out, they're equal for values of n greater than or equal to 5. They're equal so that when we subtract them, we get 0. That's in shown in black, so I'll just highlight that. Um, okay, and we, when we subtract the values here, um, 
we get 1 minus 1 which is 0, we get 1 minus 1 which is 0, and here we get 1 minus 1 which is 0, and so on. But in here we, had a, we have a different story. Um, okay, un is the one in purple, I'll just color code that, and we subtract this one here. So we take this value, which is 1, and subtract this value, which is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. Here we get 1. When we subtract the functions, we get 1 here. So we're just taking 1 and subtracting 0 to get 1. So we get these values. What do we get for these values? Well, um, both of these functions are equal to 0 for these values. So it's just 0 minus 0, which is 0. So we get what looks like a hat function. Um, the function is 1 for values ranging from 0 to 4 inclusive and a 0 for values of n outside of, of um, this n greater than 4 or n less than 0. So now we can get the z transform of our function f sub n, or, well of our sequence f sub n. We can use the linearity property of the z transform uh, so that we can write the z transform of f sub n like this here. Now what is the z transform of the unit step function u sub n. Now that is something that we covered in a previous video. We saw that it's equal to z over z minus 1. Now we have the unit step function shifted by five places to the right. So we can apply our right shift theorem, which tells us that this is given by z to the power of minus 5, because the shift is five units to the right. And we multiply by the z transform of u sub n. Well, We've already written that down at z over z minus 1. So we multiply z to the minus 5 by z over z minus 1. We get a common denominator of z minus 1. Subtracting the numerators on top, we have z minus z to the minus 4.